Good morning, everybody. Hopefully everybody's doing well today. I'm go Vir, go home and welcome to the Sunday brunch kit builds. Uh, we show up every Sunday, roughly around this time. And uh, I do a live, I work on a kit, uh, do some graffiti and weathering. Sometimes I'll work on the layout. Um, but today I've got a couple of projects, a couple of things, one thing that I need to start and one thing that I need to finish. So got, uh, you know, everybody has those, right? You start a kit and you don't finish it for whatever reason. It gets put aside because you get a different kit and you're like, oh, I wanted to work on that one instead. Well, <laughs> or in this case, um, and I'll show you, I've got 10, I've got, I have 10 of these. This is a uh, Sylvan uh, short barrel ore car. It's a resin kit and I, I've done 10 of these. Well, I haven't done 10 of them. There is 10 and I've done eight. So I got to finish the other two. Uh, basically to the point where Bubs uh, will be able to paint it and do the decaling and et cetera, et cetera. Because he normally, he did the other ones for me. And I said that I would get these done soon <laughs> so that he would be able to do them as well. Uh, how far along am I on this one? I think I just need to add the grab irons. So grab irons on this one. Uh, the truck fell off the bottom, but he has a way to fix that. And uh, and then, yeah, then this one is good to go. He'll be able to paint this one. Uh, and then this one here has a lot more to do. i got to put some piping along the bottom. I uh, need to definitely put on the couplers and the, whatchamacallit's, grab irons and a couple of other little detail parts like railings and whatnot. So I'll finish these up today. And then uh, if you guys follow Mini Prints, they have a challenge every so often where you take a peanut butter lid and you make a little diorama on said peanut butter lid. And they have a Valentine's Day one that is coming up. It's due on the 14th. So I thought I'd start now. Why, why, why not till like a couple of weeks before? Less than technically. Uh, but I knew what I was going to do with this uh, going into it. And it's not going to be some big elaborate thing, very basic. Uh, nothing like my <laughs> picture frame module, but uh, I'm going to do some stuff with this today, get that started. And then, uh, yeah, just work on a little bit of everything. Uh, now, I did throw the link of the, uh, the video if you want to join for working on something if you're you know if you want to talk trains and whatnot the link is in the chat there normally people do pop in and uh hang out for a little bit but uh is there yet yeah, that's fine that's fine um so i'll get started but uh definitely say hi to everybody who's here all the early birds uh we've got wigwag and angela and Anthony, how's it going? Almar and Mr. Brian Ferguson and Perry and Mike. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I did throw the uh, the link in there if you guys do want to join, if you're working on something. Cool. Okay, so let's get started. I think the first thing that I do want to do is the peanut butter lid thing because it's probably the <laughs> easiest where if you guys are watching me put grab irons and stuff on a ore car, it might be a little hard to watch. <laughs> but uh, with this here, I found a piece of foam that is roughly, it'll, I mean, it'll definitely fit, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to, make a circle and then I'm going to cut it out so it goes inside and I'm using my sharpest of knives
if I had a wire cutter, it would probably be a lot better. A foam cutter. But even with all the work that I've done on my lathe, I still haven't grabbed one. I don't do a lot of carving and stuff with foam, so not a huge deal though. Do you want it to be snug? Not overly snug. And I don't need it to be super flat as well. So see how it's kind of on an angle like that? That's how she's going to stay. And hopefully, as long as you don't, you know, push in on it. It should be okay, which, there, okay, that's fine, it'll be fine. Hey, Nathan, how's it going? Brian, how's it going? Hopefully everyone's doing well. So the next thing I'm going to do, so that my green container lid remains as a green container lid although i you know because it's for valentine's day i really wish it was a red one but we didn't have the red one i only had the green one and i don't even eat peanut butter so it's like you know <laughs> me obtaining a a green lid let alone a red lid already a stretch Probably why I haven't worked on any of these prior. That and I had like 50 other projects on a go. Okay. Now I don't I don't mind if the top part is brown. It's not a huge deal, but I'm gonna like I'm gonna end up painting all of this and and all of that. And yeah. So that that's, I'm making real quick work of this. It's not Again, my overall plan, and you'll see, you'll see what I do, and I'll even share my finished results, most likely, uh, well, you'll see it on the, I'm sure he's having a Valentine's special for the, uh, whatchamacallit, You know what? For the showcase of the entries. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we got Bernard. How's it going, Bernard? Uh, Nathan says, not to promote my channel, but are you going to Northlands? for my YouTube meet and greet March 11th. Um, I didn't really have plans for that, unfortunately, uh, Nathan, because getting time off is already pretty tough for me to do. Also, it's a couple of days before my birthday, so it's like, I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's really tough to plan things sometimes um even like i wanted to go to springfield to that train show that was last weekend and because of work and all that it uh doesn't always work out about me getting to go and do fun things right unfortunately but um you know, we'll have to see, because 
I have no idea where North is. Northlands, that's in New York, right? I think it's in New York, but I might be wrong. as well i also me personally i normally hold a youtuber meet and greet north of the border and i'll probably be doing one for june uh of this year nothing confirmed yet but if you want to throw up the details for that or you know, if, um, if, if other people are interested in going, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'll be able to make it personally, I'd love to go. I don't even know if I can make it to Sparky's thing because Sparky has a thing as well. And that is in May. I want to say May. cool thing about paint is that if you don't feel like waiting for it to dry sometimes, it can also be an adhesive. Because what I do normally for my layout is that I'll paint it brown, like the uh, stuff, you know, the ground. I'll paint it brown. And then I wait for that to dry. And then once it dries, I'll do glue over it. And then once the glue dries, or not the glue, <laughs> the, the glue, the glue doesn't dry. You, you, once you put the paint down and the paint dries you put the glue and then once the glue dries or not the glue you don't want it to dry uh oh, sorry train of thought <laughs> um yeah you don't want it to you don't want it to dry so once once you put the glue on you do your shaker stuff kind of like what i just did and this is just a uh woodland scenics green blend there's the uh, information there so the uh, the paint will dry and it'll hold the the grass more or less that took a lot to get out i must be tired <laughs> hey bubs how's it going and dwayne's trains and sidetracks and mark i saw a guy on youtube who bought a really big bag of grass looked like he collected clippings from his lawnmower yeah i don't know how they let him over the border with that big bag of grass <laughs> they're just letting anybody in these days <laughs> all right so yeah so i'm gonna there you go i mean like that was like literally it there's nothing you know nothing too special about this as far as this goes i mean i can you know do a little bit more but this is more or less the uh the stand or the the module as it is right because they, they are well diorama i should say it's supposed to be diorama so there's the diorama and trackside mike put up the link for uh nathan's uh meet and greet march 11th thanks for that mike and uh northlands is in flemington new jersey joy z <laughs> i have to say it like that i'm sorry 
Um, Harrison from SMT Mainline will be going. Uh, and his goal was to go to Northlands. Yeah, I mean, I, Northlands sounds cool. I've seen lots of videos and whatnot from Northlands. So. Looks massive. Uh, and then we've got Line Tracks and House of Random. How's it going, guys? Uh, Side Tracks asks, oh, uh, the lid thing. Yeah, the lid thing. That's my lid thing. Don't copy that because <laughs> it's so amazing. <laughs> telling you, I used all my best stuff on the, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, picture frame module. <laughs> But now this one, this is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's just for Valentine's Day. So I don't have to go, you know, above and beyond because it's not for my wife anyway. So, um, you know, that, that is what it is. Okay. Putting these together has been a pain, <laughs> more or less. Um, like when I put it beside a Rapido one, like I can definitely say that my skill of building these uh, is not great. However, not terrible because when you look at it and you're like, okay, it's, um, you know, it looks like a pretty decent, you know, thing, right? Um, you know, I, I want a challenge, sure. It's definitely a challenge, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's not something that is for everyone. Not everyone will enjoy doing this. And I was really worried about doing it because I'm not used to building car kits. And if you're not used to building car kits, then yes, you will have a hard time with this. But, you know, it's the things that you learn and whatnot along the way. It's definitely something that I wanted to learn. And so that's why I'm taking the time to do it. But the worst part of this is definitely the grab irons, I'm going to say. Well, it's between doing the grab irons and the fact that there's 10 of them i don't know which part is worse that's 10 or grab irons and i wish i had insta-cure spray because that would also help a lot yeah it's true because i mean like i don't know if you've ever seen it but like i'll have these mixed in with my rapido and I don't have any Rapido small um, CNs, but I bet you can't tell, you know, except for the fact that they are, you know, painted like CN smalls and, you know, whatnot. Uh, they're all weathered too. Like um, Bubs's condition was, I can have them, but he wants to paint them, decal them, and weather them. And I said, yeah, that's fine. Less work for me to do. So, except for the fact that all of my repeated ones haven't been weathered yet. Um, you know, that's the, only, that's the only way you can really tell them apart. Uh, and yeah, having Instacure spray would also be beneficial, especially working with grab irons. Last time I did um, grab irons live, I was building a proto flat car kit and the darn things went flying. <laughs> so we'll see how well this goes. Uh, 
Bub says, I got that Northlander one weathered. What Northlander one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, cause, yeah, I had an extra big blue chevron as well. And Bub's changed the number on it for me. So he also weathered it. That's true. I forgot. I always forget about that one. That is true. Okay, so I got a grab iron on. That's great. And it's kind of holding. Um, it's still early yet, so stick around and you'll see some suffering going on here when it just randomly falls off or I keep playing with it and then it like goes all nutty and I get mad at it. I got my swears out before the live show, so probably won't hear any of that. The worst part is when you get glue on these and then it sticks to this and you, you can't just sit it on the part anymore. Yeah. Because then it gets stuck to. See, I shouldn't have played with it because now it won't stand up again. is supposed to be relaxing for people <laughs> They're like yeah I do this as a hobby it's relaxing find a hobby they said Cures your stress and anxiety. <laughs> Those people have never put on grab irons before. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> this is like so. Ah. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Oh, it went sideways. Well, you know what? This is the longer one, anyways, right? That's where it's supposed to go. Okay, never mind. Stop. It's fine. It's fine. It'll be okay. I, I promise. Unless there's a bigger one than that, but I don't think so. Yeah, because they give you two different sizes of... Uh, whatchamacallit. They give you, give you two different sizes of grab irons, and I almost put the wrong one on the end of it. When the big one is supposed to go right here. It's supposed to. Keyword. There we go. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect right down to the new, minute detail. Okay. I'm not going to mess with it. I promise it'll stay there. Uh, do, do, do. This might be a ridiculous question. No, uh, do you mean DJ Chris Matt DJ several times? I don't know what you're asking. Oh, did I did I meet DJ? Like DJ's trains? Is I I think that's what you're asking. DJ from DJ Strains, because he came to Canada when I organized uh, uh, last year. Oh, and we got. Hey, Bubs. Hey, how's it going? Oh, he's gone. Oh, there he is. I'm here. Can you hear me? <laughs> good, good. What are you up to? I'm here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can hear Hi. you now. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably good. I'm just to get a do some finishing touches on this portion and all that there. And then I'm going to probably marry the building to the big portion. Nice. Uh, Perry yeah. said that he I'm, is weathering your F-59. Yes, he's doing my third one. Yeah. My She's third RDRX unit. You're catching up to me. Ah, okay. 
Yeah, I just don't have go units. They're all leasers. True. Brian hates gluing mirrors on HO scale big rigs. Yes. Yeah, they are probably just as much of a pain as grab irons. Um, I like putting details on my scratch builds, but even I struggle times on little details similar to that. I think I think everybody does to an extent because depending on what it is, like unless you've got a good grip on it, but the problem with these um, grab irons is is that they're round and they're little and even with my needle nose pliers or not pliers but tweezers it's like it doesn't get a good grip on it so it'll spin and flip and yeah it's just not an ideal situation at all it's not fun but we're working through it we'll get through it uh how <laughs> so random says he didn't have any gray hairs until he started this hobby yeah yeah it'll age you <laughs> mm. that's for sure yeah yeah i'm not going to glue the roof onto this yet I will we'll have it spot the place it for the time being. Yeah. Because I still want to do some more with the interior. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's lots you can do with that still. I know. I got two rooms so far. Um, but I still want to know what to put in front here, like in the main portion. Well, Bernard said that there was something coming this month that I would be able to use for my hobby shop. So. Oh, nice. We'll see what exactly that is. And maybe it'll be something that you could benefit from as well. Yeah, maybe. I am so beat from yesterday. Yeah, that's cold out there. It it just takes the wind right out of you, right? Oh yeah. Uh, I Nathan did say dj from dj's trains yeah yes yeah we're we're homies <laughs> no i mean like I've, I've met him when he came to canada and whatnot oh nathan's actually here i did not that's what happens when i don't look at my screen <laughs> oh that was okay I just hey, nathan, how's it going uh good first how are you good good Sorry about that. <laughs> you working on anything today? Um, I don't think so at the moment. No. Any projects on the horizon? You do a lot of uh, different custom projects there, so uh, didn't know if there was some give us a sneak peek at or something. Uh, there is one um, or several. Uh, projects but um the first train i built was uh the duchess of hamilton it's a british train and the reason why i bring that up is because i'm making a, mm -hmm. another one similar to that but parts of it 3d printed I, I i spent a long time since i worked nice. on that project now do you do your own 3d printing or yep uh, actually i have it right here nice Yeah, that's it. Let me pray I ever have. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, um, 
So tell us more about the uh, the YouTuber that you're doing. Oh, the oh the YouTube meet and greet. Um, it's gonna happen on March 11th at noon, and uh, I'm hoping to run my special trains on there. I'm hoping to bring like uh, three of them, and uh, I have cool. to bring like certain types because the other ones are not as good as the others, but so so good enough. But uh, one of the, the trains I will bring again is um, well, Ori Bench cool. North and, and Ron has run there before. Yeah. Can is, is the, can anybody take a train and, and run it there? Or is it... Uh, uh, I think you might have to ask... About per, that? I think you might ask permission about that for like certain reasons, but but it's hard to say for me. Like when I went to Heath... So you two mean great for Northlands? They they were more than willing to uh, let me run run it on there. So I find it a little odd that they uh, might. Um, so they're selective, is what you're saying. Wait, what? Never mind. Don't worry. <laughs> so yeah, um, one of them is uh, battery operated, and it's the Galloping Goose uh, um, Wigwag Workshop uh, suggested me to build that, so I did, and uh, I'm going to bring that to Northlands. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, hey, John. Hey, Dwight. Oh, uh, um, Chris, uh, If let's just say if you had a... If somebody uh, gave you a steam engine that was via, would you take that offer as a what-if scenario? Um, yeah. I mean, I, it, I, uh, it's obviously not prototypical, but it's still cool to think about if they did steam back then. Mm. Uh, I see. O&R had a lot of steam, but you'll probably never see any manufacturer make it, which is unfortunate. Yeah, the newest steam engine that's ever been built to modern standards is in England, but but that's more of like a uh, um, big deal there. Like there was a train built called Tornado, and then they're now they're building a new engine called Prince of Wales in recent times. Still not finished with it, but yeah, they have finished Tornado. That's a big hit. So do you prefer steam or diesel? Uh, a little bit more steam than diesel, but it's so hard to pick. Hmm. It's true. Mm. There's lots of classics when it comes to steam. Yeah, one of my favorite diesels is a GP30. Uh, I like a Stern GP30. That's a uh, um, yes. 2530. It's a Ready Northern one. But um, the reason why is because I, not the locomotive itself, because I actually built a locomotive for the owner of that railroad. Of Ray Northern, and then uh, he wrote a personal letter to me, which I can actually show you. Maybe a little harder to see the writing, but it's that's the actual one. And then I could uh, show you a magazine. That that's I'm cool. Of. Random says, Viator has been pre-ordered. I blame Chris for that. You know, um, I'll take the blame because, you know, it's honestly, it's the kind of locomotive that sells itself, really. I don't think I've ever seen Bachman do a locomotive quite as amazing as that one. Mind you, they also did it in Amtrak and whatnot, but Via is more, obviously... Up my way. Mm. I've been Let's on wait the cars stuff. come in. The cars will be. Oh, you have? Uh, no, I've been on Amtrak several times, but I've never been on Via. It's but, um, uh, kind of the same thing, but yeah, I, I can the see the cars that. are probably different. Uh, yeah, slightly, I think, but um, I guess there are similarities. Except for their new, uh, newer stuff they're coming out with, compared to what Amtrak is trying to get. 
Yeah. Because it looked different? Yeah, because I'm pretty sure Amtrak always had the P40s where Via had the P42s. I uh, think, I'm not uh, sure how much of a difference that is, but I'm pretty sure engine-wise, I think. Um, the they, they, Via has both, shockingly, because Amtrak already replaced their uh, older ones, like the smaller ones, like because they turned them into cabbages, and that's what Rapido uh, represents some of those, which means there's no engine. There's just oh a yeah, the uh, the 40s. Yep, that's the one. Well, all of them are not turned to cabbages because uh, there. I think there's one survival out of its original paint scheme, but like in rough condition. But luckily, that's in the museum. Running. Oh, yeah, this the is cabbage the is would... a cool idea. Yeah, I, I do like the cabbage idea too. I, I think it's like uh, I don't mind either way if they get turned to cabbages or not because the shape's still there. But uh, that's the magazine I'm a part of. That's from like tw two years ago. Oh, neat. What uh, what what's on the cover of that one? What's what well, magazine is it? Ready Northern has their own magazines you can look at. If you go under like news on the website yeah. and then, uh, scroll down, there there's several pictures, and the pictures are different magazines. Sometimes you can get them online the same as free as getting these, but I I used to get a lot of magazines. Physical copies are <laughs> but but then I realized it's better off to go get them online, so I don't get buy, get more and get a whole stack. Because I can just see it online anyway. I'm old school. I, I prefer having a physical copy as opposed to it being a digital copy. I was that way with music uh, and DVDs and uh, even see. now with video games where you can just download the video game as opposed to buying physical copies. So it's... Oh, uh, uh, I see. I don't know. I just prefer um, the physical uh, I grew up with uh, VHS tapes in the early 2000s. Yeah. 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 VHS, uh, yeah. I think I have <laughs> some old Disney ones, right? <laughs> uh, I guess it, it all depends on the movie, but yeah. That's a random. No. No. Wait, what's happening? I'm just seeing how the rain. Chinese uh -huh. spy balloon. Absolutely man. not. <laughs> oh, I thought someone was bad in the chat. Sorry. <laughs> uh, half bad. Bad joke, but. <laughs> oh, it was a joke. I see. Uh, sorry, I was going hard here. All good. Uh, Hustle Random was going to order the Amtrak, but they're glad they held out for Via. Story yeah. of my life right there. <laughs> I, I like their uh, new uh, Amtrak um, locomotives they're coming out with. I might like them a little more than the um, the, the ones uh, I drove on. The, um, the 40s or something, those diesels, I forget the newer ones. They're not the Cabbage. Yeah, SP4. just the F forty two D or something. D forty two D C. Yeah, the, they'll be. Uh, what, what is it? The B forty two D C. The forty two D C. Yeah. P forty two D C. P forty two D C. If I said that right, or what my buddy calls junk. Why would he call junk. it that? Well, I got a buddy who actually knows two via rail locomotive operators, and they tell me that operating the P forty two DCs are junk. Wow, I'm so I'm honestly surprised. I thought they were reliable. Or, yeah, I could see why Amtrak has no choice to run those. If that's the case, they they also said in the news that uh, they are. Uh, they're trying to find parts, but it's hard to find, which is one of the reasons why I try to get new locomotives. 
and uh, the only uh, the only uh, SP40 dash SP40s is that uh, in uh, let's see, uh, there it's a red and blue paint scheme of Amtrak, and it's celebrated their 50th anniversary. That's the only one I saw when I went to Pittsburgh. To see DJ and uh, my family. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one's uh, that one's a nice one. Uh, there's one that actually it runs from Toronto to New York, and uh, oh. it, we call it the Maple Leaf. There's another oh, one. Yeah. I think it's number nine ten P P forty. And is there, there is another one? It was well. the Amtrak 50th anniversary. Is, is there, there another one? Toy? Yeah, the Adirondack. And is there oh, a Toy yeah. Man one? That's true. I don't know. I like the movie. Um, not sure. Oh, I thought we were. I thought we were switching to VIA. Sorry. Because I know. Okay. Uh, um. No, I was talking I Amtrak. Oh, Amtrak. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not sure if there's a okay. leaf, but I'm. I'm not. I'm not certain about that. Um, there's so many it's hard to keep track of them all yeah that's true mm -hmm. but I'm searching that um, we had a Kool-Aid one because uh, Harrison uh, may be about like several others about um, getting those uh, Via engines the ones that are similar as cabbages from uh, Amtrak well, they're not cabbages. All oh, of our F40s they, they are still running today. How is that possible? I thought some of them were converted. No, they are all running. They are not cabbages. Yeah. They are all prime, prime movers. They are all rebuilt. Oh. Except, really shaped in form. Ex except for except 6400. ONR has some that are uh, ATCs. Yeah, but... All the VIA ones, they're all rebuilt uh, with HEP units, with HEP gen. Oh, uh, the, yeah. the computers and yeah, everything are changed. And... Well, I'm surprised. <laughs> I, I heard... Not uh, really. We, uh, we run... We love... Not really. We run them as long as we can. And we'll keep running them. Oh, wow. Is it hard to yeah, uh, the, get newer stuff? The LRC cars are... Okay. Yeah. I mean, like the the charger is the next one that's coming, but we only have we have one set that we've had for three. Not, we got three sets now. Year. Now three, because I know one yeah, just arrived. Yeah, there are three in Canada. Wait, wait. How do you know? Oh. All this? Facebook. Oh, Imagine. I see. And trackside. Yeah. Oh, uh, I see. And people, and I know someone yeah. who basically knows when they're coming in. Oh wow! Someone who works there. Nope. Like I said, I have secrets. Wow. <laughs> He's the secrets man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, well, they were very vocal on uh, on Facebook when. You know, it showed like, because it, it came to came out with a, it was a UP locomotive pulling it. And then when it got to Canada or something, then a CEA took over. Yeah, it crossed over in Niagara. Oh. Yeah. At Buffalo. And that was what, like a week ago? Uh, Yeah, it was earlier this week. Hmm. Let's see. Um, oh, I I saw actual via um pastor car in my area, uh, where close to where I live. Uh, it's a really old one where via started. It's the same type of pastor car that that um the guy from Rapido um bought, and he's trying to fix it. I don't know if he already finished it, but yeah, same same exact model. Edmund's son. Oh, so it's an e sleeper. 
I wonder what happened. Oh, I think it is. If it's still being worked on. Wow. It's it, not oh, done yet. You, you don't Jason even has not got that it. thing done yet. Yeah, th no. this one is it's a has, project in my home. Yeah, the the v, the Via one that is in my ear, like I said, um, is with other passenger cars, but um, the Via, the only difference is like there's RBMM, which is means ready northern, but stands for something else. That's the same thing, but um, Via words are painted over with just blue and uh <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah i thought i would never see it yeah, long, yeah. So. it's like i think but, after he bought it they had to they, they had to remove the uh the logo i think that was part of yeah the yeah i thing. can see that i think i can see that because i guess my my guess is like people might think like oh that's owned by via still and Andy Moore, um, that's the owner of the rare uh, paints his stuff anyway. So, like, like usually a red color for their pasture cars, or blue. That's another reason why we won't get rid of our buds. We're trying oh, to keep those cars? going as long as we. Yeah, our bud cars. We keep. We're... How we'll how keep do they find? Going. How do they find uh, parts? Because I know, for example, um. The rare that I like, Ready Northern, uh, and more bought three bud cars just to get parts off of them for the, his others to run again. Uh, we got a company. We, well, we, I we think actually we're got. Uh, what? Wait, sorry, what? Oh, I was going to say, when a bunch of them were being scrapped, I think they were able to obtain a, a parts and whatnot they needed. Well, apparently, not many there was were a bunch scrapped. That were still scrapped. running them. No, that's no, no. Good. There actually wasn't a lot that were scrapped. Maybe wow, one or two. That's not bad. As much, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, how come the um, the Apache car was scrapped? The one that uh, Rapido uh, re salvaged all those random parts and chairs from that Apache car. Oh, the the blue streamlines. Oh no! I just mean like like the actual. And then eventually they switch. Wait, what? Sorry. Which one are you referring? Uh, one of the passenger cars where he made a a a, a fake passenger car in the basement of his house, but with the actual original parts from a different passenger car to make it look even more realistic. I was just wondering, like, uh, how come that fast car that he salvaged the parts off got scrapped anyway? Exactly. Well, if you watch the video, yeah, he said sure. that, that that was an old car, and on top of that, that was beyond repair. The, floor oh, was, the frame sense. was rotten. Whereas oh. Edmondson, the frame is in very good condition. You said everything else has been very good condition. No, I said Edmonston is in good condition. That's why he's restoring that one, because he also wrote on uh, that. The reason why he made his train in the basement was because Via was actually scrapping this because it was beyond repair. It's an old car, like the frame was rotting and everything. So he asked to take all the stuff out of it there to make his train in the basement. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I see. Huh. Uh, Brian wants to know if Rapido is releasing any more via LRC cars in the future. I don't know, and I don't uh, think so. Yeah, I think the tooling for that is done. I think I think they even it's... said it on their last on their last update Pass. about that when they were coming. <laughs> uh, I think they said they also said that the, that was yeah. the last run They're... on the website when they came out. Um, I'm surprised Via makes uh, Burr stuff as well. They, they have a separate user channel about the uh, Rapido side of England, but uh, I find it fascinating. Oh, you do, like the British stuff? Yeah, I like Burr stuff anyway. 
like I said, my first engine was based on a British train, and that's still around today. Uh, the was it the APT or A A? Oh, it was called. It, it's a steam engine. It was called like the Duchess of Hamilton. Wait, sorry, what? Oh, uh, it, it's a steam engine. It was. It was red. But um, see. Uh, also, random picked up the new P42 in library DC version. I'm gonna have to send it out to have it converted to DCC sound. It's a bit more evasive to do on my own. Um, yeah, I mean, Kato's, I have no idea with Kato mm. as far as what the innards look like, but if it's a P42 or a P40. I think that there is a fair amount of room in there. Add there is. Room. It's just a lot of wiring you have to do. Wow, that's crazy. I haven't heard like the first computers didn't have the nice wiring at first, like like when people went to the moon at first. But uh, as you can see, why it hasn't been improved since then. Yeah. Um. So Via tries to uh, use what they have, but sp spends less or something, or? Um, depends on the cars and the locomotive. Like Via is supposed to be getting rid of their P42s this year, but wow. that's only if the um, the chargers and whatnot, if they are able to fulfill that order and get everything working. Uh, but they're supposed to hang on to the uh, F40s for another, like, that. what, do they have another 10 years to them, I think? That's crazy. I can't remember. They had another, they, they, uh, they'll actually be running those by at least 2040. For, wait, wait, 20, 24? 2040. 2040. Well, that's a long time. Well, at least the good news is if you have old stuff and new stuff, you can have like more locomotives to have more business. At least yeah. that's how I see oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I know that the passenger cars are probably older on Amtrak than the locomotives themselves. I think they go through more cars than actual load. Oh. What makes you say that? Just with the amount that they have, right? More wear they're built as good as the locomotives. Mm. It makes me wonder if uh, the bash car scrap. Uh, makes me wonder if the um, Astro cars are more easy to fix on than the locomotives themselves because of less parts and stuff like that. Possibly. Mm. I only ever really see locomotives get scrapped when they're like in an act. Oh wow! Um, cars, I know, some uh, cars have a shelf in there, so. Oh, that makes sense. I I know that um, in Baltimore they still use trolleys from the '30s, and some of them are modified to be uh, oh. modern as possible, but still look old. But um, other times they had tried to um, get parts from other museums just to fix their trolleys. But there's been a lot of mixed views, like saying yeah, it has to be, a, to be a bus. Wait, what? I can imagine it being even harder to find parts for a trolley. 
Yeah. Uh, an actual train. It also makes you wonder if like people have to make their own parts from scratch, similar to like how they have to make steam engines parts from scratch nowadays compared to like just finding like a sewer, for example. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see that. Yeah, it, it makes you wonder if like, let's just say like the computer gets outdated, then how you're going to replace that? You got you to replace with something newer. Uh, so, like, like same thing as like um, GT ones. Uh, there's been a lot of hazardous materials in them, but how are you gonna? If pe people don't want them to run with being modified, because they want them original, but the, the original is already bad enough because there's already has like I said hazardous materials with all the components and stuff like that. Yeah. Hey, Derek, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. Nice to you join us. So, uh, Chris, you have those, uh, um, uh, not the cabbage ones, but the other ones that Via owns, the newer ones. Oh yeah, yeah. I've got a, I got a few. <laughs> I think I have about uh, six. Honestly, I would love the Amtrak ones. That all... means a lot. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say, I think that every single one of them is different. Like, I have one that says, like, Diet Pepsi, oh. one that's Kool-Aid, one that's and CBC Radio. Oh, yeah, no. and... uh, I'm yeah like, he, he picked up all the libraries. Oh, nice. Um, Back in the day. At, at least at least there's different, uh, um, different looks on them of paint jobs to know which is which. The yeah. Thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the the I would love to get a model of uh, the Amtrak I rode on, but um yeah, the uh, DJ Strange has to uh, like that. Do you know the I number? On. Wait, what? Do you know the, like the, the you road, have the road number? number? That? Uh, it it can't, it changes every time I go to Pittsburgh, but um, last time it was uh. 98 the first one i went on then uh the the one that's with the 50th, 50th anniversary was 108 that, that's all i know oh okay but but i have a record every last trip i went on to uh pittsburgh and all the way to harrisburg but um weirdly enough on amtrak's uh pastor uh, train station there's still a gg one that sits there but never gets used when i was little i thought it would get used because of just being sit there with the caboose but um, Trisha has been staying there since longer when I, way before I was even born, just in that train station without. Luckily, it's not a can. It's in a canopy, but selling out the elements, which is not that bad. Just got a little off topic. No. No, that's cool. Yeah. So uh, basically, um, the G I'm just the GT one. Sorry. Hmm. Oh, uh, oh no, I, I keep going. The GG one that's uh, on Harrisburg train station nowadays is in uh, Pennsylvania colors, but I know Amtrak used to run those a lot. The G, like I said, the um, GG ones. If you uh. No, yep. uh, Susie, um, what DJ had interviewed her, record her interview. Susie. She uh, Susie. actually used to drive GG. So, oh, she's actually used to drive GG ones before they were uh, retired. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I have a book on nice. And, uh, I'll be back. A book of oh, our the GG ones. We have the GG ones. So you used to draw. And this is actually the exact book. Uh, it's available on Amazon, but uh, I, I got it because uh, DJ uh, met, 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 mentioned her. And uh, yeah. And at the back of the cover, hmm. you get to see all the locomotives you ever drove.
exactly from the Pennsylvania Rare Museum. Nice. And then uh, oh, the, right. uh, the wait, what? Sorry. Oh, I, oh, I right. saw a picture of a Conrail there. Oh yeah, that's actually uh, what that that. that you was, can't miss that, that blue. Right? <laughs> right, you'll love that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. There's another Conrail. I actually saw that other. I actually saw that uh, G, GG one in, in this. That's in uh, Strasbourg. All the rest of them, except for the um, F forty PH, I didn't. I didn't ever see. But the rest I saw. That's all the ones she chose. Um. So, Chris, uh, what do you like, steam or diesel? Or is it hard to pick? I, I I prefer diesel, but I'm not opposed to the idea of steam, you know? How it all you started, mean it's like, right? Yeah, you mean it's, like, outdated or something, not, not as reliable as diesel? I don't look of diesel and, you know, the whole diesel power thing and... Uh, just more interesting that way. Yeah, like I, I had steam when I was young, younger, right? Uh, I know a lot like, of my favorite locomotives are just diesels. So, just hmm, what are your type of favorite diesels? Like the F40, the F59, uh, SD40s are usually pretty good. Oh, so like the older stuff? I don't know. I, I switched between them. Um, oh, you like newer stuff and older yeah. stuff at the same time? More, more modern, I think. I, I, I do modern stuff. Uh, I, I like a little... Uh, as long as it looks different, I like it. But I'm also picky about um, the freight locomotives because they look all the same to me because of the cab, the shape. Looks the same. Just minor yeah. differences I, that I, mean, I mean most of me. Wait, sorry, what? Like depending on the actual locomotive, like you can you can break it right down where it's like with like an S D forty, right? So you go S D forty and then S D forty dash two and then S D forty dash two W or uh what was the other one? Uh, SD forty two F, where it's like a wide body all, all the way down. Oh, you uh, mean there's different many looks. different variations. But yeah, you, you mean different. Yeah, but, uh. yeah, and it, but it's to like the railroad or you know, like the road name and whatnot. Yeah. It's really cool, and era as well. Yeah. Um. They're all great, but I mean, there's a couple that are just like, nah, I could do without, you know. Like Eminem Rails, he hates high nose locomotives, and I always give him a hard time about that. But I don't know, I, I don't mind the high nose locomotives. Yeah, I think they're okay, but they don't really bother sure me. Hard time. <laughs> <laughs> Brandy Northern has no. high noses. They're there. But, yep, they do. Yeah, actually, all their stuff is what are they, used. At, GP nines or? Uh, I think I think it's uh forty dash forty. I think it's like freight diesel. Um, they're common, similar to like a GP thirty, but longer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Neat. Yeah, DJ to him uh, says all diesels are the same, which I can see why, because of the exact controls and how they operate, but the look's different. Sometimes. Uh, Reggie Northern has a... Uh, Probably, because he drives a lot of them, right? Yep. He doesn't like the rebuild. So he of like a, probably sees that they all operate okay. Yeah. He uh he told me he doesn't have many locomotives compared to like someone in a big, very big collection. He just probably has five or six locomotives. 
Yeah. Which I find it crazy, but that's just me. Because normally I have a bigger collection than that. Yeah, some of them are like like with the F40s, right? When they come out and they've got like all these different paint schemes, I can't help but collect all of them. And yeah. then there's ones like, I don't know, what's a good example? Like a, like a D40. I'll just oh, yeah. grab one or two. If it looks good running in a pair, then, then I'll grab two. But, you know, I don't necessarily need to. Mm. But, but yeah, full schemes and, you know, anniversary units and heritage oh, yeah. units and the uh, neat ones. Yeah. I, I like my other that rare level of wow. <laughs> that yeah. One. yeah. I will. I like it when other railroads like like promote their railroads on their own paint schemes of locomotives. Um, but it makes me also wonder, like the other way around, like let's say if they had steam engines, like the actual trains that do exist nowadays, not the ones that aren't scrapped, but just painting the modern paint scheme and call it a modern engine, steam engine. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but I guess like people will say you you shouldn't do that. It should be like original, but it just to me it's just like it's just a paint scheme because it could be changed yeah. back at any time. Well, yeah, that's why I I like the wraps, right? Because you know you're not really changing anything about the physical locomotive. You're just you know changing the more or less the advertising on it. Yeah, basically the color. Um. I know that uh, um, Reggie Northern has a Canada locomotive, but um, the reason why it, do it doesn't uh, run anymore because he said anymore the owner likes says it's hard to find parts for that certain steam engine, so it's on display at Reading. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. a few of them that they're trying to get running. Uh, there's a, a C uh, E8. And it's in the red, black, and white scheme. And I think that's stuck down in Toronto somewhere. Oh, wow. Um, tarp, basically. Yeah, because they're, they're having a hard time finding parts to uh, keep it going or to get it going or something. Wait, is that a steam uh, or a diesel? Yeah, it's sad like... when, you know. Yeah. Technically, it's a diesel. Oh. But it's real. Like, E8s are old. Like, like, you know, the really said, long uh, ones that it has the rapid nose. Oh, you mean like similar to like a uh, um, F7? Yeah, and uh, well, it's more of a, like because the F7 has more of a rounded nose, where the F9 has a bit of a more a thicker, a bulkier rounded nose to it. Um, oh, it's oh, more, like, yeah, I'd say more like an F9 than an F7. It, is it but it's, it's like ones? twice the length because it's like an A and a B unit. Mixed. Oh, one of those. I guess you'd say. Oh, you're saying it's the same. You're saying it's the same type of little yeah. but longer. Oh wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, Andy Bubs, do you know the year on those when they when they start? No, I actually do not. Uh, Andy Maury saw uh, on two of those. An E eight? No, I don't. Yeah. I do not did. have an E8. No. <clears throat> huh. Oh, Perry has an E8. He has the uh, yeah. Amtrak one. He's got, yes, he's got the special Amtrak one. I uh, heard those oh, nice are... Too. That's such a nice paint job on that. Oh, I heard there's like certain switchers that are easy to fix. And like, let's just say like a GP30 is harder than that. Yeah. Which I find crazy and fascinating. Uh, Anthony Anthony wants to know if I'm getting the Athern via engine. Are you talking about the, the P42? Because... Or the SW. Probably. But they also have a via switcher coming. Yeah, the SW... What is it? An SW 1200? 1000. I can't remember. 
one thousand. Oh, SW one thousand. Yeah. Um, yeah. The no, same one I got. I, I didn't. I didn't pre-order the. Uh, yeah, but you. It, it's it's definitely not the same thing you've got. <laughs> yours, no, yours it's is just way modernized. Too cool to be the, well, it's just modernized. Oh, uh, Chris, do you like uh, shark noses? The the ones that are the diesel engines. Ah, uh, the shark. Hey guys, nose. I'm gonna have to let you go. I got a phone call. And it looks oh, like gotcha. Oh, uh, I'll talk to you later. All right, bud. You have a good one. Later. Shark nose. Okay, I'm not like a huge fan, but uh, you know they exist. Yeah. Uh, a good thing they still do. Uh, I think they're okay, but um, I still like like uh F yeah F sevens more than that. Yeah, F sevens, F nines, and then the what are they called? They're the new ones that are being announced, or they should be coming in soon. The uh, there's an A the, unit oh, and a B unit. Oh yeah. AP. I can't remember. Uh, do, so do like, many. Do you like the uh, mother and slug engines? Yeah, yeah, like a nice GP9 set. Mm. Yeah. I honestly don't mind it when they... Uh, you have, really just, wait, what, sorry? Oh, I was going to say, you have to get all three, though. You need you need a, a nine on each end and then a slug in the middle. Oh, uh, nice. <laughs> so, you it, know, it looks uh, weird if it's just the one with the slug it's weird <laughs> uh i find it more interesting i don't know why just if anything that looks different is like fascinating to me a little more but um like uh, um i would i guess i don't mind seeing a gp30 that's already a slug anyway but uh i know that dj has in one of his videos like one mother one sl one slug together uh Mystic says he loves shark noses. Oh, nice. I know Harrison has a lot of tycos for shark noses. And Anthony wants to know how many Atherin P42 am I getting? Uh, it's tough because there's the Love the Way, which they did two versions of that. And I did pre-order one of those. There's supposed to be a... Uh, a veterans unit so it has like a giant poppy on the side but i can guarantee you that will not be sold in canada so even though i really want it i might have to order it elsewhere if i can get my hands on it if they didn't pull it why would it be uh, sold elsewhere well because obviously atherin is in the states right but I'm pretty sure uh, they didn't get permission from the Canadian Legion to do the poppy unit. Oh. And yeah, just kind of like with the, how they almost announced the Every Child Matters thing without getting permission to do that. Oh, uh, that they, sounds bad. Yeah, they're they're bad for that. They they need to do better. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like you should get a license for that. Yeah. Well, the, the the problem is, is that they don't like the royalty, right? They'll they'll go ahead and they'll do it, and then if they can get away with it, they'll do it. Yeah, and, it sounds a little uh, greedy. Well, that's why I'm not a huge fan of Atherin, right? They play fast and loose sometimes, and uh, yeah. then they wonder why they get in trouble when it comes to something like that. Yeah, it's bizarre. <laughs> Their part. Mm. So, uh, you, just curious, uh, you, you think a slug looks a little weird because there's not much kind of boring or something because of, like, less parts on it or something or just looks a little off? What, the way that I always look at things is, you know, if you have on the left, you have to have something matching on the right. I forget what you uh, call that. There's a, there's a word for it. And... When you have a slug and an A unit, so let's say GP9, it just looks odd. So I I mentally need to have an A and a, and a two A units with the slug in the middle. Oh, and so it looks a little better. Yeah, 
yeah, it just looked better. I again, that's just my thought process on that. I could be wrong. Uh, I you know everybody has their own thing, right? But uh, yeah. unfortunately, mine's it's gonna be a difference of three hundred dollars. So oh wow, <laughs> unfortunately, you know, uh, SWP um, has uh, Mother and Slug, but they have like what you just said. They have like another one in the so it's basically the slugs in the center. But their look ones yeah. are much cleaner and nicer. That's in Pittsburgh. Uh, Derek says, if you don't have someone in the States to buy it for you, let me know and I'll get it and ship it. All right, I'll reach out. Um, it really depends on what happens with it because I'm pretty sure it's not even going to make it to market. Because its prime market is the Canadian, you know, because it's Canadian Legion, right? It's a Canadian model. You see it in Canada. So if there's any American guys that do run VIA or will run VIA, then yeah, sure, know. they'll get it. But for it, something like it, that, it's not, it, it's, sorry. not gonna be safe. Is it oh, possible to get used for, for oh, sorry, is it possible to get used for some from someone else if it's in good condition? Somewhere how it was new? possibly like do you, do you mean like if somebody was to buy it yeah to buy and then resell it or something maybe a hobby store or something that is if it makes it to market if, if it makes it to market but only the u.s market because it might get banned here you know how it is where you know certain countries have certain rules with certain things and oh, you yeah, can get away like, with like something Oh, yeah, like how China does similar stuff, too. Yeah. So let's say, for example, if if it's an American company that may own and paying royalties for it, uh, then, yeah, you could get in trouble as a dealer selling something like that in Canada without providing or getting giving some sort of compensation to, you know, the uh, the Legion for using their logo on your product. Oh, Which yeah, is that definitely makes understandable. Yeah, that's and like, understandable. And then we get into the whole conversation about, you know, because it's a veterans unit. It's for the veterans. And if you have anybody in your family that's ever been a veteran or gone to war and whatnot, it just seems, you know, almost disrespectful of Atherin to do that and not want to give money to the Legion just Ooh. because of, you know, it, it's it's ugly. It's really ugly. And <laughs> I like there was one point when I found out about that. Like I sold all my Atherin units. I didn't want them anymore because it just it just speaks loudly of their character. But oh. again, that's that's just me. You know, I would never tell other people to do that. That's just what I did. So I guess but, you like the paint. I guess you like the paint scheme, but you just felt like it was good enough to resell them anyway, just to uh, not be a part of it yeah they, they were great locomotives i've got no beef with the actual product themselves like i had some gp38 some sd 75 eyes and mm. it's because it's from atherin and uh yeah i just wasn't really a big fan so well i i guess uh harrison would probably agree with me but not that it really matters but I think Walkman is a little too cocky or greedy, like like saying like, uh, oh no, we don't probably don't need to update our stuff. But because uh, I find like Walkmans are okay, even like for me, like like when I scratched what I won, my first one from a judge say Hamilton, it was pretty hard. And then when yeah. I scratched what on another one, it was it was still hard. So I find like it's not easy to fix sometimes because that's how sensitive I think they are. Yeah. Yeah, scratch building is not easy. It's not. Uh, yeah. It's not for everyone. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I, mean, I just mean, I just mean like if you like want to modify a decoder or, or basic stuff like that, or like I'll put a different shell on it or something. Yeah. But uh, if you have like original thing, it's, it could last longer. Yeah. Like true. it originally was. Have you seen a Tom Sings and Chris when you were a kid? Because that might be a silly question. Um, when I was 
Well, when I was a kid, it's like, I didn't really go anywhere, you know, like I, I took the train a couple of times, but it was, it was local, you know, nothing so, too extravagant. So it was rare occasions, maybe. Not even, it's like, like Go Transit, which is our local short line oh. commuter. So it's like from one part, like from one town to downtown Toronto, basically. Oh, that, that's like, like the taking, most. So if I like taking the bus, for example, like nothing special about it feeling. Basically, yeah. Uh, Although you know it's it's a train ride. So when you're when you're young, even you know when you're older, you know a lot of people just love naturally taking the train. It, it's you know it speaks for itself. It's like yes, you're ta just taking the train, kind of like you're just taking a bus. But if you're into that sort of thing, then it's you know. It means that much more, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, one time uh, when I was on Amtrak, uh, there was a guy constantly complaining. I don't think he didn't write too much about trains, but I uh, didn't fully understand the real situation. But for me, well, for me, yeah, I feel like, like, oh, no wonder why they're slowing down because there's a sharp curve or something. Like horseshoe yes. curve. Yeah. On horseshoe curve, they go real slower. But, um, oh yeah, that's that's massive. Yeah. Um, I, I, DJ said there's no other way around horseshoe curve, which is why horseshoe curve still exists. But uh, yeah, I've been on horseshoe curve only for the for the Amtrak ride itself. Oh, does Amtrak go through there? I thought that was just yeah. for freight. Oh, it's both. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a video spot for just curve, like, the other way around, like, 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 I've never been in the actual park part, but on the train itself, just passing by, like, I recorded that three times. Yeah. That's awesome. The only downside by Amtrak is that, uh, it's like cellular data if you want to go on Wi-Fi, because if you go somewhere else with low bar, you can compare that on your phone. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow, no wonder why Amtrak is having this bad connection. Because my phone has a bad <laughs> connection, too. Yeah. And yeah, we have uh, Wi-Fi connections on the trains, like on the VIA trains as well. But it's not, it's nothing great. Oh, uh, is it similar to like the Amtrak one? Probably. Like uh, they've got those antennas on the top of the cars, right? Oh, yeah, that, that's probably not enough. No. And then you've got, like, how many hundred people feeding off of the same antenna? Oh, that could cost a very lot of money. Just yeah. for Wi-Fi, I guess. And uh, is it true that VS Garmin known just like Amtrak is? Uh... I think it's independently owned now. At one point, it was owned by, I think I want to say it was owned by CP first, and then it was owned by CN. It might still be owned by CN, but I think it might also be its own individual thing. Bubs or Perry, if you're in the chat there, let me know, because I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know all the logistics of it. I know that at one point... They all had a piece of the pie. Oh, well. Yeah. I know that uh, other rares in, in the United States, um, I think it's a hypocrite thing. That, and I mean, no, not to go too dark, but um, like, like, let's just say you had like a passenger train that you want to just ride, drive steam engine through. You can't really do that on freight. Yeah. Unless it's like other, but yeah, it's, they have a, they have a law in the United States that says Amcash can go anywhere they want. And I feel, I feel like that, and I'm thinking after I saw that, it's like, that's not fair. But it does make sense why Amtrak would do that. Well, it, but, it's, it's not too far off from what Canada has. Because Canada, we have de de designated tracks for uh, CN. Like, CN owns certain tracks. CP owns certain tracks. They'll interchange at points mm -hmm. and then you've got lines like freight main 
main line, the VIA will go along that, but they have to, like, if the if the CP needs to go through, then VIA will have to wait no matter how long for the freight to go through because they have priority. Wow. Um, wow that makes yeah. Sense. And then you've obviously got other tracks that intersect as well with down near Union Station, which houses Go and UP and uh, Via, uh, and it'll eventually there's going to be a, a route that goes from there up to Northern Ontario for Ontario Northland because um, they used to have that, but they canceled that like years ago. But they're bringing it back again. Hmm. Uh, Perry missed the question. Uh, who owns Via? Is it is it still CN? Does CN still own Via, or is Via its own thing now? That's that's the question, Perry. I uh, I saw news on on YouTube that um, Amtrak is trying to get out of freight service as much as possible, but um, I find that a little risk hard to do. Like even like if I wanted to go in business because like um where else are you gonna go to use the tracks? Like uh, the horseshoe yeah. curve is there probably owned by NS or something like that. Well, the freight is more lucrative for sure. Oh, uh, like more accessible? No, like you you make more money doing freight than passenger. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, so Perry says that VIA is owned by the government of Canada. Uh, which makes sense. Yeah. I honestly feel like like no com no company from owned by government could go probably can't go out of business unless it gets refunded all the time. That's my I, guess. Honestly. You know, they do things like downsizing and whatnot all the time, but Oh yeah, it's uh, expen it expensive on the track. Well, COVID, like during those times, like obviously not being able to send, you know, passenger trains out and whatnot, traveling and lockdowns, oh. you know, there's no way to keep something going in that kind of uh, circumstance. So, oh, you're saying yeah, there's a limit. Was, yeah, there was a lot of trains that were cut and all that. It's slowly coming back, but. Oh, wow. Same with Amtrak. Yeah. I heard they uh, made made more money in 2019 than they ever did before in the history of Amtrak. Hmm. But but 2019 is actually my first Amtrak ride, which was uh, yeah 98. Just a regular Amtrak train. Hmm. hmm. And uh. uh Anthony asks, Chris, you framed your layout with two by fours. Uh, that's correct. Just the bottom bottom level. It's all supported with two by fours on the bottom and running up the backs to hold the second and third level up. But I used a, um, what's the size of that? I, I can't remember the size of the lumber that I used to make modules for the second and third level but yeah mostly two by fours they're strong yeah i uh, uh, live in an apartment so not as much space i uh, live in an apartment luckily i got a basement but uh, my most of mine are fold-up tables Just in case. Well, you're making like, uh, like, uh, yeah. lemonade out of lemons. You're doing what you can, but you're enjoying the hobby, and that's the important part, right? Yeah, that's true. You uh, you don't need a, a massive quadruple deck layout to have a good time and run some trains and yeah, share I the hobby. Like it's, yeah, I feel like it's more of a, more of a pain than what it's worth. For me, I mean, like, like mm. I probably couldn't make a helix or something, but I can definitely scratch both trains. 
Yeah, a helix would be tough on a fold up table. But oh, yeah. I'm sure it's doable. Uh, hey, Randall, how's it going? I'm almost done. I finished this car here. Yes, it doesn't have a truck on the bottom, but it's in the box here. But oh. this one's all ready for about to paint because it's uh, it's got all its grab irons on it and whatnot. It's got what's, couplers and this one. What's the paint job going to be on it? Or both of those, actually? So it gets that, you know, the C, it's like a brownish copper. Oh, yeah. Like a, like a dark so, color. Yeah. And then the the decals that go on it are white. Um, and then, like, odd little things, like the railings will probably be black. Oh, yeah. Couplers will be brown. At least that's Mark's favorite railroad. That's true. True, yeah. He yeah. likes his CN. Yeah. Yeah, Perry said it's like a red-brown, which is probably the best best description of it, yeah. Yeah. Um. Did you uh, interview someone who, who worked for CN? Did I interview someone? That, but I do have a friend, uh, actually the guy that was the best man at my wedding. He actually worked. And oh, what uh, he, yeah, he gets to chop cars up and whatnot. Oh, they actually physically scrapped them? Um. Yeah, some of them get scrapped, some of them get repaired, uh, like panels get replaced and whatnot. But yeah, unfortunately, in some cases, like they'll take the uh, cutting torch and break it right down. Oh, I guess they would have to just to um, get stuff out of the way or, or like make money off of metal and stuff like that. Yep. And then you know, reuse it some in another car or something. Yeah, I, I don't like it when uh, they, they scrap old diesels that they don't make anymore. I guess I don't mind on newer stuff, but uh, still, it feels kind of weird. But hey, it makes more valuable with other locomotives. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad when, they, you know, certain things get uh, demolished and whatnot, or, you know, they retire yeah. them. and But it, it happens. Yeah. Um, do you like when, uh, um, like the cab parts of diesels get converted into like a modern looking engine, like a modern standards, or is that not your type of diesel? Not, not so much. Like most of the cabs that I've seen, you know, they're either like the comfort cab, the safety cab, which is also oh, yeah. a wide cab or the narrow I don't know. I, I prefer like a wide body locomotive compared to like oh. the, the skinnier ones with the big cab front. It's weird. I don't know. It just doesn't look right. And then you've got all that walkway. Oh, and yeah. They don't look as mean. You know what I mean? Like when you've got a locomotive oh, that's see. like all one size down on the side, they just look a mean locomotive. Just like a runaway train? No, no, we're really trying to solve the Yeah, yeah. I see. Did you uh, like that movie? Or was it inaccurate? Like most people say they're train fans? I, I don't know. I mean, like, it's such an old movie, but it's, you know, it would be redid it, you know, with yeah. today's movie making technology. I'm not a huge fan uh, of older movies. I like all the the new stuff, like all the Marvel and, um, and whatnot. You're, you're a Marvel Wars, fan? But... Yes, yeah, huge Marvel me, fan. Me too. I, I like Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen's cool. Yeah, um, yeah all the uh, Spider-Man, like even my kids, huge Spider-Man fan. And Are I you going to see it? Like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. They're really ah. cool. 
Yeah. Are you guys seeing the new Spider Man movie that's coming out with the Spider Verse one? Yeah. I was actually I'm probably like I took my kids to see the first one. It's kinda of, when you have kids, you don't feel as weird going to see a cartoon movie. Mm-hmm. But I use it as an excuse to go see movies like that. Uh and oh. you know, they I actually really enjoyed it for an animated me. movie. And yeah, I, me, I, me I, too. I can honestly were, say it's probably one of the best Spider-Man movies. I agree. They were trying to imitate a comic book, and I think they did it just right. The whole thing. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you, it's the only re- who's your favorite Spider-Man, though? Uh, Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen. Okay, okay. Do you think that they're going to do a live action Spider Gwen? Uh, hard to say. I know there's a lot of like probably rumor trailers, like 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 they do like like make their own trailers, but I don't think that's think that's a fake because you don't get to see the real deal afterwards. Just yeah. Well, you know who? Like, do, do you watch Netflix? Uh, rarely. Like I have watched the Wednesday stuff. Okay, so if you've seen Wednesday, you know her friend, the little blonde? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of rumors going around saying that she's going to be Spider-Gwen. Interesting. Yeah. When I I saw her, I'm like, she kind of looks like she could. And then, you know, a few weeks later, I started seeing reports of that, that people were saying, oh, yeah, there's your next Spider-Gwen right there, you know? Oh, so uh, like kind of, kind of like an idea afterwards, but then becoming a rumor. Yeah, I see. When jokes become true. Interesting. Um, do you, do you like uh, DC or is Marvel the more thing? DC's okay, but they're just not on the same level with continuity. Yeah. I, I heard um, the sad part. I heard the sad part is it's not about DC at all, but there's a Marvel guy who uh, wants to change all the actors, like like Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman. Yeah, and I find that a little weird because they're all really good actors. Like, like if ain't broken, don't yeah. fix it. Yeah, I like the Dark Knight Rises was probably one of my favorite Batman movies, where you know you have Heath Ledger as the joker and i know a lot of people will say well what about uh oh what's his name jack nicholson as the joker and yeah he was good but i mean like i feel like the type of joker that like when i see the joker i think of heath ledger's joker you know that's just that's my joker right there uh my type of joker is like the animated from the 90s i think that's more of like the fiscal idea but that's my opinion yeah, no, he's good too, and I like that uh, Mark Hamill voiced the Joker for a lot of the animated stuff as well. Nice, yeah, I think he did a, a good job, even though it's even though well, so it sounds bad, but twenty at the same time. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That, that's my type of humor, but uh, yeah. Um. Even uh, the newer Batman with Robert Pattinson, oh. uh, it wasn't that bad of a, a movie. Like, oh, wow. I was really, I laughed the first time I heard that he was going to be the Batman. I'm like, yeah, okay, good luck. <laughs> but then when I saw the movie, I was like, okay, all right, yeah, I get it. Mm, curious, did you ever, did you ever thought playing like superheroes on your layout? Um, not really. I don't. I, I try to keep things as prototypical as possible. Oh, if, I see. So the only real heroes you'd probably see on my layout are, you know, firefighters, EMTs, oh, stuff like I see. those kind of heroes. Mm. Or I guess you could get close, like we're trying to make a movie or something like behind the scenes. Yeah, that would be a, a great idea for a, uh, like a, a scene, like a somebody, like make somebody making a movie kind of thing, mm. like a film set. Yeah, I don't think I've ever, ever seen anybody do that. I think I think they have done that on a on a Russian layout. It's similar to Wonderland. 
Oh yeah. But um they 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 uh they pretended like it was World War Two even though it was in the modern era, but the, the Russian land was still pretty cool. It was on a Russian uh, um YouTube channel. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Like like the not to get not to get politics, but it's not really about that. They were having like protesting, but more like like saying, "Hey, the the job, the work area is not very good," and stuff like that was fine, but it was pretty interesting anyway. Yeah. Huh. Uh, let's see. Am I missing comments or questions? Oh, um, my bad. Rand Randall loves anime. Uh, just got the the Bleach spinoff, Burn the Witch Blu-ray. Can't wait that one. Uh, Mark Hamill is no longer going to be the Joker for animated Batman since the passing of Batman's voice actor Kevin Conroy. Hamill said, "Yeah, he he literally said that he wouldn't do the Joker unless he was the Batman, um, which is very that's noble of him to you know. It's not about the money at that point. That's how you know he's good." Uh <laughs> At least he's doing it for fun. Yeah. Do you uh, like Loki? Like like the um time thing? Oh, like um like the Disney Plus series Loki? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was it was good. I'm looking forward to season two. Yeah. I find it, yeah I find it interesting like all these different versions of Loki as a what if scenario, but it makes more sense because of different timelines. Yeah, some of it's hard to follow, but you know that that's true. Yeah. I think uh, what ifs. I think the what if. Sorry, the what ifs are are kind of refreshing, even though it was the same story but a little uh, tuned. Yeah, yeah, that was good. It's good to see you know them branching out like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I uh, have a Captain Mar Captain Carter uh, um, comic. Because oh, uh, really? right next, what people don't probably don't know is uh, right next to the train station, like I said, with all those passenger cars, yeah. there's a comic book store that is right next to it, and they don't just sell comics; they sell like models, but more like the gaming type. But but it can be used for model trains too. But yeah, when I uh, looked at uh, um the the stuff they had, it reminded me a lot of uh, something Lori Calver from Calvin Films' his YouTube channel. He makes a lot of yeah. steampunk, and that's what he actually used for his own steampunk. So I, I wanted to get it for the same reason, but then it was like way too much, like like twenty dollars or something. Yeah, for thirty. Makes so sense. That, uh, yeah, so that eh, I'm not gonna buy. It. I, I could make my own from 3D printing. So that's kind of what I did. Okay, so those. I can't need those. And there's the colors. Whoa. Do you like uh, other hobbies besides uh, Marvel and trains? Um, not really. I don't really do much else. <laughs> I don't. I think that like if I try to do too much, then certain other things get neglected, right? Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like, there's things I like doing outside of the hobby that have nothing to do with trains. Like, you know, I do enjoy going golfing. Golfing is uh, something that I do in the summertime. Oh. Um, yeah, golfing's fun. Yeah. I Many don't get to go as much as I'd like, but, you know, I make it happen. Yeah. I feel it's kind of limited compared to, like, winter and summer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do your kids like trains as much as you or is it completely different um they they like trains they like running the trains but i don't always have time to you know monitor it's not it's not go in and you know have at it it's Okay, got to set everything up, got to turn everything on, and then get them set up and whatnot. So, oh, this is a complicated yeah. system that they're probably not used to. 
Yeah, like I've always had uh, like the wooden train sets for them. Oh. So they can all be active with, with trains without even like directly touching the expensive stuff. <laughs> oh, I guess you, I guess they don't have like like the battery trains. Um, the, uh, we did have a battery train at one point. The problem is, is that they leave it on and whatnot. So. Oh, and then and, waste batteries and money. Yeah, they they're not always great with uh, monitoring things like that. Like turn uh, it off after you're done. Uh, I guess not just something, but I guess like 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 they might uh, um they can respect it more when they're older. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they do enjoy running the trains when we do get to hang out and run the trains. Nice. Yeah. So, so I know you're a serious modeler, but do you just run trains around in circles for fun, or is it more like operations? Uh, I'm not at the operations point yet. So right now, for now, I'm just running loops and watching them go around and Ooh. take pictures. So you would so rather uh, more be operations later? Yep. Yeah. yeah. When I get all my sightings situated, then I'll be able to do more op sessions and stuff like that. Hmm. But because my main line is done, I can I stick to the main line for now until the sightings are done. Uh, there's a um, friend. Yeah, he doesn't have, that I have. He doesn't have a YouTube channel, but he has been in like three of my videos. Um. Name uh, Joel Hollyback, not that you know him, but he wants all Pennsylvania Railroad, and he's a real good mm -hmm. serious modeler. But he doesn't like want to go into St. Olds and stuff like that. But uh, he he does uh, run trains for fun, but not in a loop, but more like back and forth type of thing, but in a very long distance. Last time I saw him was the 2019. Cool, cool thing about it is, is that, that you know, have to do just one thing and. You can do your own thing or you can set up to do big op sessions with you know a few guys or whatever mm -hmm. and it really changes how you use your equipment and what you need and there's so yeah. much diversity to it there's a um budget mall rallies uh, channel they're more in england but uh they make a point where on um, like 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 they say a guy wants he looked at a magazine saying this guy um, bought a train and it wasn't prototypical with what he wanted. So he was just saying, eh, I'm going to sell because it's not related to my layout. But then he, the point was, he said like, like, why not? Why would you want to sell your locomotive if you like it so much? Why not just keep it and run it on your layout anyway? We basically thought it was weird, but I could see, I kind of could see why either way. Yeah. If, because a lot of guys will just buy things that they see that they like. And I've been known to do that as well without fully thinking, you know, do I need this? Is this something that I will need? And then or, every or single off used. Yeah. And, you know, it hits, it hits the display shelf and then, you know, it's forgotten about or it doesn't get as much love as something else. And then oh, every yeah. so often... Usually, usually once a year, I do a purge of things that I don't really, I didn't think that I would use as much or that I thought I would use more or things that I don't really, uh, you know, it was a spur of the moment type thing and I regret it now. <laughs> uh, I see. I guess you're a little more careful what you buy or something. Um, I try. I, I have, mm. uh, you know, somewhat of a plan. I have half of a plan and it basically just involves trying to stick to my era and stick to road names that I enjoy and that will run in that era. Mm. And then essentially just keep sticking to that will hopefully uh, allow me to hang on to more locomotives for a longer time. Mm. For me, um, I just like to keep it simple. Like, I'd rather have a DCC controller with uh, basic running trains, but um, more of like um, just whatever I pick will run. And because uh, 
think my, my layout's not really like a uh it's just more of a make believe place and uh but it's real to me because I make my own rules on it on their on that layout but um like I could run steampunk, I could run my scratchable trains, but my scratchable trains I could feel like are much easier to control because like I could make like I want it to look like this, I want it to look like that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes it fun for me. Like I can make so many ideas that probably have never been done before. Yeah. I think that's like one of the great things about the hobby is that there really aren't any rules. So yeah. you can do things like that. And no one can really say, hey, you're doing it wrong. That's, yeah. You know, who are they to say run trains on your layout, right? Yeah. That doesn't matter. My, yeah, I think in my opinion, I think some people are too Even picky of how... And... Wait, what? Sorry? I, I just... I just oh, like... No, saying, go ahead. I just think some people are like a little too picky of like, like how it has to be a certain way, but... But at the same time, how do you get the young generation to um, want to enjoy it if you uh, make them that strict? And, like, I mean, if, even if somebody's not a train mm-hmm. fan, they would still love trains, so get trains and not use them for basics. It's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's that whole, like, uh, it's kind of like do on to others, you know? You, you would never uh, tell yeah. somebody else how they can or shouldn't run a train. You know, because you would never want someone to come over to your house and tell you that you're doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah, unless that, that you're telling like a thing. Yeah, unless you're legitimately saying, "Okay, this is how I would like to run my trains in this style," you know, and I want to be as prototypical as possible. And let's say you don't have all the information, and someone comes over and says, "That is not typically how that's done," but here, let me show you. And that way, when you go to do it, you'll have more fun because you're doing exactly what you want to do, but like properly, right? So yeah. there's that. Well, um, there was a guy in England who uh, wanted to make a real train based on like, like, like I'm gonna do like a train close to eight hundred passenger car, or like like a modern uh, um, Pullman car, but it's in a British passer car and so that's what he did he there was like three there were five uh shows that but four of them were showing um how they were um restored the fifth one was more of like um put them all put together and i think that could be realistic like 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 saying oh that's never been done that would never happen but then like like you could be wrong because it might happen in the future mm-hmm. or like um where, where you think that will never be prototypical, but then when somebody does it for real, it's like, oh, that is prototypical. I thought that's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many ways that you can do this thing, and it's what finding what works best for you and in your layout and how you perceive it and how you how you want to have fun. Yeah, it sounds it's like uh, yeah, like I said. Uh, I think some people like. I I really don't like the. I think it's a rumor where people say the hobby's dying, but I see so many younger youngsters, like even like me, or younger than me, and I'm thinking like like that, that's just a rumor. I, I have a friend who doesn't live far from here, and he's a YouTuber, and he's not a middle schooler. He's yeah. a fan train as much as us. Which is awesome, because like when you think about it, like when I was in school, when I was in high school. Uh, I had already gone through my my earliest train phase, you know, and then um, hanging out with guys that do uh, like the um, the mini war game stuff, like you know, oh, war yeah. and stuff. Oh, yeah. So I have seen we, we had our armies and we would play on weekends, and those battles would last like four or five days, and nice. you know. Most of that and the mini modeling that came from doing all that, I carried on into the hobby here because there's a lot of, you know, fine detail stuff and whatnot and Mm -hmm. painting miniatures. So stuff like that, you know, you you, you take it with you, uh, especially the scenery stuff as well. Right. I I always enjoy the the scenery and the crafting side of things. 
I also think like like not to be as prototypical, like um like let's say for me, um I like Ready Nerd a lot, but I don't really care much about like like let's just say like like the eighteen hundreds or like the fifties, because I don't grow up with that time, but I feel appreciated more the time I was a part of, but I think that's I think that's kind of everyone, but I can see why people want to pro- model something that's not for their timeline, but at least it's interesting for them. Absolutely. There's a lot of a lot to choose from, and I think that even with N scale now, you're getting a lot more variety with N scale, even though it, it's not as big as HO, but you're still getting a decent collection. So, yeah, and a lot more space than other scales, except for Z scale. Yeah. Yeah, it makes. When I saw DJ's layout, um, it made me feel like I want to go to N scale because there's so much space compared to the layout that I have now. But, but hey, at least I uh, have a layout and then not have one at all. That's true. That's the uh, that's another thing, right? Yeah. I I think it'll be kind of risky for me to uh, take a different scale because um, I have to buy resell, buy resell, and it just sounds like a chore more than fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I used to sell a lot and, and whatnot myself, but with the way that the pricing has gone with even shipping, it's like, oh. I don't think there's as huge of a demand for, you know, buying things online, but I just yeah. mean, yeah, I, I think what might be me also is, um, I don't know if it's, the company's thinking everybody wants more typical, everybody wants more detail, but why not just take like like a Tyco train set back to where it was but modernize it mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I just I just think if you have more of that, people might be a little more interested. For sure. Yeah. And and I mean like uh like makes it make accessories or like how Tycos were like like than just a train ride around circles, because like maybe like like somebody says, "Who cares if the train goes around circles? I want something more than that." Absolutely. Yeah. I am adding because I don't want it to look like a peanut butter jar. <laughs> oh, you are doing the peanut butter challenge. Yeah, this is for Valentine's Day. Oh yeah, I, I put my entry in already. It's You're already done. Oh yep. man, I uh, I gotta get with it. Uh, <laughs> I well, literally so just least... started like today. Well, at least it's on March first. <laughs> is it, is it March? I thought it was February fourteenth that it was uh, due. Uh, now I'm not so sure. I thought I saw it on their on his website, not website, on Facebook. I might miss. Mm. No, I'm not so yeah, sure. Because this month it's it's Valentine's uh, themed. Oh yeah. So I think that it's due Valentine's Day. Oh, I, I, I see now. I could see why. <laughs> so um. When you look at uh, Harrison's layout, like SMT mainline, do you think I could resalvage locomotives if I buy more or something? Just mainly curious. As far as like um, buying older stuff, like used stuff, and then yeah, and like fixing them up maybe, or then repurpose them to what you might want. See, I've never done a DCC install. Oh. Yeah, me personally, I've never done it. And I, I'm not a big fan of doing electrical. Mm. Uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, I actually swapped out for the first time a full motor from a Bowser locomotive because it stopped running. So when I had spoke with them, they said, well, it's a, it's a motor issue, so we'll send you a replacement. And I'm like, oh, great. I have to do this, you know, <laughs> I have to do this on my own. So I, I did it live. And was, uh, uh, hmm. it went all right, but it didn't fix the locomotive. The so, locomotive is still broken. Yeah, I have to. I'm gonna. I'm mailing it in to them, and they, they'll deal with it. But mm. 
uh, to answer your question, it, it's not my it's not my style. It's not my type of work. That's uh, yeah. I like doing the scenery stuff. I like you know run it but when it comes to doing like dcc installs and whatnot there's guys that have been doing it way longer so i'd i'd sooner buy something that is new mm. or have somebody else do it <laughs> i see yeah i guess uh, i would have to like know a lot of like soldering if i like like said for me doing so much scratch money over the years it does um get pretty good after a while like yeah. like rough at first but then it gets better like i've done all the the wiring for my layup and that's probably as much wiring as i'm gonna probably do uh i guess it might feel exhausting after a while i i just when, when you've got so many different things in the hobby that you need to do or you need to get through in order to get to that stage of running the trains or mm. whatever, then, you know, the things that you're going to do and enjoy, such as scenery stuff, you're going to take a little bit longer because you enjoy doing it. Where with wiring for me, five minute job tops, I want to get it done and out of the way, I don't care about it. <laughs> so, so I guess you'd rather but, get over and done with. Exactly. Yeah, it's just uh, it's not my favorite, and I yeah, know some guys feel the same about it, but to each their own, really, right? Yeah, I feel like soldering's okay for me, but um, when I sometimes do scratch blade, I don't normally say this, uh, say this before, but sometimes scratch blade is so hard that uh, I just want to take a break from it, and then like go back to it later or say, well, how can I do it differently later? Like that piece is so hard to put on, I don't know if I can actually do it. But I do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that too, where you really it, it really tests your skill. Yeah. Especially like what you want to make or like, something. Yeah. Like I've never poured water before. Oh wow. And I thought it would be some huge thing. So I decided to do it live on one of my third Thursday live shows and it turned out really well. And I was really pleased with it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess it's not as bad as how I thought it was going to be. Wait, uh, so the water, the water effect, uh, did that, um, was that more of like, like a leveling thing or, um, or was it easy as pie than that? It, you know, honestly, it was it was tougher getting to the point where you gotta, you know, put the uh, the water in finally than actually putting the water in. Oh, you when mean, I like got making it. Yeah, like building the whole surrounding area and whatnot. Mm. I got uh, water for free um, from DJ the first time I went to his house, and that was like oh, really nice. easy. But the only difference was at my parents' house. It was hard for me because I don't have a perfect level of layout. Mm. Or at least I did, and I still probably don't. But yeah, the uh, the water tends to level itself, which yeah. helps. I wonder what that um, is. That like grass on like uh, top of brick walls? Yeah. So I took the the peanut butter lid which you can see ah. up there, right? So it's a peanut butter lid. Smart. And then I took a piece of pink foam. This was much bigger. But you mm. can see, I literally cut a piece, like a circle nice. of foam and put it in there. But I put nice. it in on an angle like this. So that's why it's higher back here. So that's mm. higher than, let's say, the front. Because it's more of a, it's going to be a display, right? Ah. So painted it brown. And then, yeah, I, I looped it with this brick sheet, which is by Knock. I don't know, it's really hard to see because of the lighting. Uh, is is that paper? It's, um, yeah, it's like paper. It's thicker than paper, but it's not styrene. 
I don't know. It's like in the middle. I don't know. I just call it brick sheet. It's brick sheet. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, yeah, it's already weathered and and whatnot. So I just wrapped it around and I used the Instacure glue and I tack it all the way around. And I, when I cut to, um, you know, to make the proper length, I didn't overlap it. I actually met it right at the seam here. And that, hmm. that seam actually pretty big. Like you can't even tell the cut or why, like where it starts and where it ends. So it's uh, a uh, nice wonder... little display piece here. Uh -huh. I wonder what's going to go on the grass. Or, uh, maybe I guess some kind of builder over there. Our YouTube channel would be awesome. Oh, possibly uh, something. Saying. There'll be. I mean, it has to be Valentine's Day related. So, but that's that's the base of it. This is that's that's your display right there, and then and goes on it. What's going to go on top is the Valentine's side of it for the. Uh, uh, oh, right. So, like like some kind of billboard of Valentine's or something. Oh, I don't know. I can't give too much away. <laughs> oh, yeah. I shouldn't be asking too much. <laughs> Our people no, would know. Like... You're, you're curious, so you want to know. But I, I want to leave some of it as a surprise, right? Well, well the good news is it'll be coming up later when the um, contest. That's true. Yeah, that'll be... Uh, I, I'm pretty sure. I'm almost positive that that's uh, on... Um, the 14th. Oh, I see. I'm pretty sure. Uh, hmm. And when I cut this, when I uh, shaved it down, the uh, the brown, or like, sorry, the edging is white. So now I'm going over it with brown so that it doesn't look white. Because hmm. I don't like that white edge around there. Hmm. So, um, uh, Chris, uh, would you uh, make Marvel models, or is that not your thing? Um, depends on what the Marvel model is. Like, if it, uh, like if it's Lego, like my kids and I, big fans of Lego as well, right? I'm always buying nice. them sets. And, At least that's something. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, got, I, I uh, saw my old one got a you know baby Groot. <laughs> yeah, you got a we got him a baby Groot that's like that tall but pure Lego for Christmas. Wow. So awesome. you know I have to help put it together, right? So mm, stuff like that. Fun. You know. it, it is. It's uh, you know I I grew up with Lego as well, right? Yeah, so, I, I did. I did too. Um, I I had a lot of Lego sets. And I still yeah. do, but I haven't played them a long time. But at least I have them for later. Do you do you follow any of the like the Lego channels? Uh, I have I have some Lego channels I follow. Um, there's one company that uh, is pro typical with the uh, um, Lego trains. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I've seen the Lego movie. Actually, all four of them. And uh, I. When I was in middle school, I, I before I went to high school, I saw the first Lego movie, and it was in 3D. Oh, nice! And I uh, got to uh, see the, la the last, the second Lego movie in a different theater, but in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I saw the first one. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. In, in the um, Lego Batman movie, uh, it's more like Batman being a show-off, and uh, it, get, it gets more funnier than that, but yeah. Yeah. Instead of him being so serious, he's like like saying, I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 I like the part where the Joker says, how is he being all of you again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good to find the, the humor and the that stuff. Yeah. But I like the I don't know if you've seen this part, but I'm gonna say the last part of it. Yeah. I like the joke when he says Batman I'm gonna hate you, but he says it in a nice way as possible. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I 
think I'm going to finish painting off around here, and then I'm going to call it a day because I have to work soon. I usually oh, only go to about two o'clock, so. Oh, I, I, uh, I'm a lost track of time. <laughs> well, when you're having fun, right? Yeah. Uh, At least it was fun than uh, something. <laughs> Absolutely. How how much do you think your layout's done from one to ten? How much of it is done? Yeah. Um. Uh, probably because like the top part is not done at all. Just just the track work. Uh, um. I I'd have to say I'm at about a six right now. That's pretty close. Yeah, as soon as I get more done on the top level and, you know, finish some of the sidings and whatnot for my second level, you know, it'll it'll get closer to that 10 mm. mark, right? Yeah, but, I guess we all hope for that. Yes, but unfortunately it takes time and money. Two things yeah. I don't have a lot of. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, me too. I uh, I have to uh, use an EBT car and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, bills, bills, bills. Yeah. If I had as many trains as I had bills, I'd be a lot happier. Yeah, I guess <laughs> less bills will be, or no bills will be better. Way better. <laughs> but that's being an adult, right? I guess. Yeah. That's, that's the stuff they don't warn you about. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I had fun here today. Made my little uh, diorama thing, and I got most of the stuff done on these two cars. One of them's done, and uh, I'll get get them over to Bub so that he can paint those for me. But I don't think I'll be able to paint them until at least the summer, right? Because it's too cold outside to paint. I never paint when it's cold. So. Mm. Uh, but I do want to thank you for coming on uh, and oh, hanging you. out today. Oh, thank and, you. My pleasure. Yeah, it was no, it was fun. And uh, Bubs was on earlier. And then for everybody in the chat as well, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next Sunday. And I'm pretty sure this Thursday uh, is Third Rail Thursday, and it's my week. So um, Thursday night, we'll hang out, and I'll probably work on the layout or something. I'll find something. Mm. I usually do. Uh, <laughs> uh, see ya. Yourself a great week, and. Uh, we'll see you later, Nathan.